Hey guys, welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. Today I'm going to be talking to you about total dissolved solids. And I'm doing this to sort of continue the discussion that we had with testing hardness, specifically in my 150. So what is TDS? It's the total dissolved solids. It is all of the organic and inorganic matter that is either dissolved or suspended in the water, both in our tap, but more importantly in our aquariums. Everything added to the tank can impact your total dissolved solids. This includes your fertilizers and water conditioners, certain foods, any, basically anything we as an aquarist add to our tank can impact the TDS. And the reason it's so important is because TDS that's out of range can cause a lot of stress to fish. It can impact their growth, it can impact their breeding, it can impact their kidney function, it can impact the way that the red, red blood cells can carry oxygen, and it can also stress them, which makes them more likely to be prone to disease. It can also impact the fish's lifespan. So it's a bit important. And what I like to do is get a baseline of my tap water. I have a well and it, my TDS can vary from season to season depending on rainfall as well as what's going on on the farms around me. So how does it work? Fish obviously live in water and they obviously contain water. And their cells sort of regulate things osmotically to an ideal range for Again, as I mentioned, carrying blood, metabolism, this is how they produce energy, all those sorts of things. Most importantly are their kidneys. And the kidneys act as sort of a pump, um, moving water in and out of the body and excreting the toxins and waste that are found. A higher TDS moves much slower through a fish's kidneys because there's a lot more stuff going on in the water that the kidneys have to filter out. This becomes relevant, especially with softwater fish, if you think about your wild apistos or some of the really black water tetras who come from waters that have such low TDS, their kidneys move very, very, very quickly and they filter out all the toxins very quickly, urinating very frequently. And when you put them in water that has a higher concentration of TDS, the toxins end up staying in their tissues and in their kidneys longer which is how this impacts their health, vitality, breeding, growth, and all those sorts of things. Now, harder water fish, you know, are used to all those different things going through their kidneys or that pump. So their kidneys are used to not working very hard. So if you put them in water that is too soft, it deprives them of those needed uh, salts that their body is accustomed to. So how do we test it? Well, you know, I bought a little TDS pen, and these things aren't like super accurate, but it gives you an idea. I think this one was about $30. This is a sample of my tap water here. Basically, you turn it on, put it in the water, and look at the reading. And this says that my tap water has a TDS, which is all the suspended stuff in water, of 102. So that's our baseline. And what you want to do in your aquarium is, you know, obviously keep things as close to that as possible. So I'm going to grab a sample from the 150, which is the newest setup in the fish room, and just see what the TDS reads there. Again, turn on the pen, hold it in the water, and it is 105. Now what does that mean? It means that there's something in there that's adding a little bit more um, dissolved stuff, but not much. And that's really good because these fish need low total dissolved solids. So how do we adjust our total dissolved solids? Well, there's a few ways. You can use RO units, reverse osmosis, which basically strip everything out of the water. But you have to remember that some mineralization and salts are required for function. So you either have to strip it completely and add things back or cut it with your tap water to an appropriate ratio. Another way that you can adjust your TDS is through using rainwater, which is generally very, very soft with low dissolved solids. For most aquarists though, all you really need to do is regular partial water changes. 
So if your TDS is creeping up, you do your weekly water change of 20, 30, 40%. You add in your dilute tap water, and that's enough for the majority of species in the hobby to do quite well. A lot of people use water softeners in their house, and it's important to realize that just because they're using a water softener, it doesn't mean they have soft water. What water softeners do is they remove the carbonates that cause the lime scale and the, the white stuff on pipes and on glass and things like that. The thing is, is that they're not just removing them, they're replacing them often with chlorides, um, which, which doesn't remove TDS. So you can't just use a water softener and, and think that you're providing soft water for your fish. So what do the ranges mean? and how do we know what to do? Generally speaking, soft water fish will um, come from waters that will read from zero to about 100 with this pen. Neutral to moderately hard will be about 75 to 150. Hard water is over 150 and super hard water is over 300. Now your African cichlids like that super hard water, most snails like that super hard water, um, Central Americans like that moderately hard to hard water, but all of your South American tetras, dwarf cichlids, discus, angels, and the vast majority of the species I'm interested in really prefer that soft to neutral, slight hard range, which is again zero to about 150. So my tap water, again, coming out of the tap is, is great for what I'm doing. I hope that explanation helps you understand TDS a little bit. Again, I bought this on Amazon. It was maybe 20 or 30 bucks. Um, you wanna get the one that allows for regulation between different temperatures. Um, but it's, it's a good tool to have if you're really worried about breeding fish or say you're having a lot of issues keeping fish and you can't figure out why. Sometimes this can give you some good clues. Hope that helps. Make sure you stop by my Facebook as well as my website, MsJinx.com, for my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. If you have any ideas for Tuesday tips, please let me know. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my weekly videos.